Hey guys, today let's take a look at some strange things we can find in Angkor Wat Temple in Cambodia. Here you see something very, very fascinating. Look at this chariot, right? Look at this chariot and this man is using an, an arrow uh, standing on top of the chariot. Look what animal is tied to the chariot, right? This is a rhino. Look. Look at that head and there's a horn in front of that face and that ears. This is a rhino, right? So humans were domesticating rhinoceros and then they were using them for war. I mean, this is fascinating to see. I don't think I've seen this kind of information anywhere. Human beings using rhinos and putting them to work in chariots and using them in war. I mean, this is amazing. It's shown with a thick skin with many flaps. Rhinos always have multiple flaps in their skin. And this one is also heavily ornate and armored uh, because, well, that's what happens when you become a warrior. The rhino looks fearless. Rhinos never shy away from a fight, even though this guy is trying to kill it. This is quite fascinating because if you talk to biologists today, they will tell you it's not difficult, but it's actually humanly impossible to domesticate rhinos. Why? Because animals like rhinoceros uh, fit into a classification called ornery. They're just too inconvenient and too wild to tame. Think about it, we ride horses but why don't we ride zebras? Because zebra is also classified as an ordinary animal. It's just too difficult for humans uh, to tame these animals. And some of you may think that's not true. Uh, Sheena, the queen of jungle, rode a zebra. This is actually a painted horse. They tried to get an actual zebra, but it's impossible to tame ordinary animals. But this carving is proving us wrong. Ancient builders of Cambodia actually have domesticated rhinos many, many centuries ago. And it makes you wonder, we're not able to tame them today. How did they do it at least 900 years ago? And I think a lot of smart people have wondered about this. In the movie Avatar, the characters tame wild animals and animals help them and even participate in the war. Uh, this is the dire horse. It's actually just a modified zebra. James Cameron is telling us that they were not tamed by force, but these people knew how to connect their minds with its mind and then it starts to do what you want to do. Right now, we are working on this technology, okay? We can use your brain to move someone else's hand by just thinking about it. Elon Musk has recently introduced a Neuralink technology, a tiny implant on your brain and you can do plenty of things with that. Uh, they have already done these implants on pigs. So it is possible that the ancient builders had some type of esoteric knowledge to domesticate all animals, and this knowledge has been lost now. Now, this is why they were able to domesticate rhinos and other wild animals. Remember, I showed you the hell in Angkor Wat, uh, the hell according to Hinduism, where you can see all the strange punishments. One of the punishments is torture by animals. And again, here you can see a rhino is using its horns to impale a sinner. See how decorated this rhino is. Uh, its entire skin is covered with dots. Nearby, you can see this guy is being eaten alive by a lion. I don't know if you understand how crazy this is. Not only this, there are gigantic, majestic stone lions greeting you when you enter Angkor Wat. I'm completely blown away by these lions while uh, thousands of visitors will just walk by without giving them a second look. They will be like, oh, nice looking lions, right? 
So plot twist, there are no lions in Cambodia. There are no lions in Southeast Asia at all. Not today, not ever. All experts agree on that. What's in the red is the historical distribution of lions. Lions existed historically only in Africa, Middle East, and India. And today, of course, they've diminished even further, uh, which is shown in blue. But all experts agree that lions never existed in Cambodia, which is like a thousand miles away from India. So how did ancient builders who lived in Cambodia carve these lions without ever seeing one? I mean, obviously Hinduism comes from India and they took a lot of information from Indian texts. But in order to carve an animal, they must have visuals. You, you can read about a red-lipped batfish for hours. But if you've not seen one, how will you sculpt or draw the batfish? So this detail is really quite fascinating to me because if you think about mainstream history, this was carved by Cambodian sculptors using chisels and hammers. You know the standard depiction, right? Scantily clad, using primitive tools. Uh, they used animal-driven carts. So there was really no way for them to travel to India, which is more than a thousand miles away. Yet, they were able to carve lions fairly accurately and even stylize them in Angkor. How is that possible? Okay, so now it's your turn to tell me how they domesticated rhinos in ancient times and how sculptors living in Cambodia carve lions which uh, do not exist in that country. The answer may be hidden in the four-tusked elephant carved at Angkor Wat. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.